Hello and welcome to me going over every single art book for Hoseki no Kuni. Uh, this is a booklet that came with uh, a special edition of volume 11 of the series and it is the life and culture of Y35792031812789 casually. Um, that is supposedly supposed to be a nickname for Earth and it's technically an encyclopedia which is what Foss was supposed to be working on this entire time, which is so funny and ironic. Um, but it's basically an encyclopedia on the three races, uh, kind of. Um, and it is a hardcover, and it comes in this little box, um, and it has the name on the side and all that. Uh, cool. And then these are some of the sketches that are in the book, and the sketches are really cool. Anyway, here's the book. Um, it's not, I guess it shows up a bit on camera. The hardcover is super nice. Uh, it has the words printed on the spine as it probably should. It has a bookmark. Um, mine's a little tattered at the end, but yeah. And then um, I've been like throwing this across the room, obviously joking, but <laughs> I, I've, I've been like getting this out and looking at it. Like, especially whenever I have like theories or like things or in the, because the information is so interesting with all the stuff that's been going on. And the world building, man, there's so much world building that isn't explained in the series that is like eloquently laid out here. It's very nice. Um, but yeah, there's an imprint of the gem, uh, like logo, the gem like picture uh, for the front. And I believe that comes with on a sleeve. And it's kind of written like an academic paper which, um, again, adds to the, like, encyclopedia-ness of it and, like, the fact that it would be something you were in school, which is just very funny for uh, Foss, who this is what Foss was supposed to do and just did it. So this is kind of, like, the abstract. Um, I may just read directly from the wiki what it says. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and um, this one... Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read directly from the wiki from these and give my thoughts as I go. Um, this is the table of contents. This is kind of like the, this one's kind of like the abstract. This is the table of contents. The Amarillo is just, I think that's how they say it. I don't know. The, like, other race literally just gets one page. A limp that with the ice blows. I'm going to make all the gem people one video, all the Lunarians one video, and all of them, even though they're going to be different lengths. Uh, I just feel like I'm going to have to split this up because it's so long, um, but I'm going to start by, I'm basically just going to be reading the, what the wiki has at the time this is out, um, and it's for, so that you guys can see what it is and actually know what it is. So this is the introduction. In the summer of year a number, where's that in the chat? Oh yeah. So in year whatever this is, um, in another universe that the remote universe research and development organization has been observing for some time, a planet inhabited by inorganic crystalline mineral life forms was discovered. The results were shared through the Laika Collar Foundation, announced at the Tronware Art Museum special exhibit statue, statues of inorganic life forms, and received huge response. Um, that's probably in reference to the other art book that I don't have yet, but I will be getting soon. Um, as a result of further observational research, the planet was tentatively named uh, Y-335, you know, this that long string of numbers. Uh, we're just going to call it Earth for simplicity. And details of its inhabitants' natures, inhabitants' nature and culture have gradually become clearer. Furthermore, living on the satellites of Earth, in quotes, uh, not the Y, blah, 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 blah. An advanced civilization is speculated to have been harvesting the mineral life forms tentatively named Earth A04. Um, that's this, which one is it? That, that's this one, Earth. Yeah, that's Earth. That's, it says Earth right there, A04. Uh, when a letter of inquiry was sent, fortunately, a reply was sent back, and we were luckily able to present a greatly surprising and fresh report. This time, the first part focuses on the life and lifestyle of cultural of Earth and its satellite area. We hope that even the young children can enjoy reading it with the book being completed, compiled of si simple sentences and pop illustrations 
uh, the pure life of the mysterious li mineral life forms and the contrasting gorgeous and ever-changing civilization of six satellites are both beautiful and harmonize well with each other. We hope you read while well, imagining your life in a distant universe. Uh, and then there is this signature at the bottom of the page, which reads, Remote Universe Research and Development Organization Planetary Cultural Lab uh, 318, uh, Ifu, Director of Cultural Research Institute, uh, research, yeah, Cultural Research Institute, oh yeah, that's Pinka, Cultural Research Institute, and then this is their name, Ifu Pura Umu, Pura Umu. Um, Here's the lovely table of contents. I'm not going to go through reading all of these. We're just going to jump straight into the gems. So this is chapter one. Yeah, however this is set up. Yeah, chapter one. Earth. That's, that's going to be called Earth uh, area. Um, previously, we conducted an observational study on the mineral life forms and their thinking. Now we have conducted a general overall observation throughout a long period of time to understand their life and culture as one. As a result, Based on their unique physical characteristics, a part of the sample but surprisingly delicate culture has been discovered. Uh, their community is thought to have been built to resist outside extraction, and everyone with some exceptions is given an important social role. Uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, I, like I said, I'm reading it, but I'm also giving my thoughts. Um, so this book is in the perspective of like a third party in like the series and they actually get to interview the lunarians but for the gems they have to put a like they are it's they talk about it only in observations because of course we don't ever hear about this third party or them interviewing and it's so interesting to hear about the events of the story in a third person perspective like other than following Foss. i love this book so much like it's just such a good read and um, I helped uh, translate some of the Lunarian parts to the wiki because I, I, there's so much lore here and it's so good. Anyway, on to the gems. Um, gems, uh, I'm, okay, I'm gonna stop just, I'm gonna call this Earth. Whenever you see, whenever I say Earth, I'm saying this um, in your mind, it might sound like I'm saying Earth, but I'm actually just saying that long string of numbers every single time. So Earth's native inorganic crystal life form uh, they're one of the planet's large species, standing at uh, 150 centimeters tall. Due to harvesting by the by in, the invading lunarians, their numbers can fluctuate at a moment's notice. But originally, but ordinarily, around 26 individuals exist together. That okay? I'm sorry. I was gonna read. I'll call it all. Read it all first. Their crystals are generated deep within the earth and are wait. They use earth. Okay. Anyway, and they are born out of a cliff on a sandy cape at a frequency of every 100 to 1,000 years. The illustration on the left depicts the appearance at, at the time of birth after being born, um, sorry, I lost my face. After being born, Congo refines them into a uniform shape and they are given the moniker of Gem or Hoseki, which is where the name, wow, it's almost like that's the name of the series. Um, Anyway, they have no gender and lack any reproductive function. They can produce a sound using vibrations from their oral cavity and communicate via speech. Each individual crystal life form's body has its own color, but in order to prevent surface erosion via ultraviolet rays and sand freeze, their daily lives are spent with their bodies coated in a plant-based white powder and glue. While the blank blanket term of mineral life forms is used in truth, uh, various types of them exist ranging from the exceptionally sturdy diamond to the brittle and hardy, hard, blah, 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 hazardous cinnabar. I'm also bad at reading, by the way. <laughs> and there are large differences in their individual personalities. Each uses their own particular skills and qualities to supplement the group's lifestyles. They can, damage, they can be damaged or even dismembered without feeling pain and are extremely insensitive to changes in temperature. Even if their body is destroyed or scattered, they can regain their individual self if their pieces are rearranged. Due to this, they have a poor sense of danger and are strongly curious, but the, by, by and large, they have a pure and, viv, viv, and vivacious temperament. Uh, but due to the considerable physical differences they're born with, their sense of cooperation is somewhat poor. Basking in the sun gives the microscopic organisms called inclusions 
living in their body's energy, allowing their norm normally inflexible crystal and mineral bodies to move. It is thought that the inclusions utilize ancient proteins from living creatures. Additionally, the inclusions store the gem's memories, if, and if a gem loses a piece of their body, the corresponding memory is stored and those inclusions are lost. At night, their movements can become sluggish due to the lack of sunlight, as they are unable to re reproduce and can survive as long as there is sunlight. There was originally no need for them to live in, a, in groups. The existence and instruction of their leader, Congo, as well as the war with the Lunarians, has caused them to become a more militant, militant uh, communal species. Uh, so that's what this page says. Um, so I just love how this book kind of gives like subtle jabs towards bots, like throughout the whole thing. Um, that's one thing that, that I find a little funny about it. Uh, the other thing is that they say 26. Where, where does it go? Here it is. 26. That's what that says. Uh, Nijudoku. 26. Um, they say that there's around 26 individuals exist together. And when you count them out, like at the beginning of the series, there's 20, there's 26. And so what, it, what, what irks me is that, um, Congo states in chapter one, uh, that there's 28 of them. And, um, Cinnabar also says that she's, uh, they say, Cinnabar says that, uh, out of the 28 of them, Cinnabar is the least, uh, like a hardness. And so I'm like, the books, this book is 26, finally in Kaguya with all the gems. So I wonder why the first chapter says 28. Um, maybe Ichikawa has gems that are, exist in the group that just are never mentioned or seen. Um, maybe Ichikawa planned for more, or maybe they were counting gems that had been recently taken, which is what I was thinking. But yeah, this book says that there's about 26. Uh, unlike the first chapter of the series that says there's 21. 28, sorry, numbers. Who can read? I can't read. Okay. Winter clothing. Winter clothes. Clothes worn by the crystal life forms the sea. Yeah. The season for this particular type of apparel is defined as from the point when there are fewer summer flowers and the grass becomes more yellow, up until hibernation begins. Using the soft portion of the stem from the plant, they call asa, which asa means morning. I. The translation on the wiki doesn't um i i think whoever translated this part chose to not tr like translate them more directly so i'm wondering if the other ones have other meanings but awesome means warning so i find it interesting that it's awesome anyway they create a fiber from which their fabrics are made the remaining parts of the plant are used um uh the remaining parts of the plant are where, sorry i lost my place the remaining parts of the plant are used to produce paper also naturally grows in the northern parts of the island and in late summer blooms with cute white and pale blue flowers among the scarce resources of the island also grows in comparably plentiful numbers and can be safely gathered and can be made into sturdy but lightweight textiles to our knowledge it is extremely similar to linen fabric created from flocks um also i just realized that the reason why they don't say morning they say also is because all the words are written in katakana boss and uh yeah oh yeah that's 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 awesome yeah, also. um so yes this is asa so that's why it's because it's written in uh katakana so that's why all the names that are listed is just what they sound like that makes sense okay anyway moving on the clothing designs undergoes frequent revisions this outfit consists of white a white high collared shirt worn with a black tie on top where's the yeah um, the white shirt closes with wooden buttons down the stomach area, and there are many romper-style black pieces that fasten below the waist with the same. The, they are also have a technique for dyeing their fabrics. Their five basic colors include the undyed original color of the asa, the black skin of the plant called ade, the, a bleach white made from the pressing from pressing the remains of white butterflies, a yellow derived from the pistil of the Fuyoku, Fuyuko Yama plant uh, flower, and a purple dye found in the sap filled gals of a tree called Yuragi. Uh, the, the, of these, the growth speed of the Yuragi is extremely slow, as such, only a few gals are harvested every year, few year, decades, and the dye is considered very valuable. By mixing a small amount of the Yuragi sap with the seeds of the Ade plant, 
a deep black dye can be made. Furthermore, mixing the yuragi sap with the butterfly se secretions creates a vibrant red color. Other bright colors such as blue and pink can be expressed through different mixtures, but because they are all required, the sap of the yuragi tree, they are only used specifically for embroidery thread. Um, the hooks of the high collars and the buttons on the shirt are made of wood. The belts are made of beech tree bark, which is stretched after being softened and fixed around the waist. This material is flexible and durable and will not tear even when holding up the gem's black swords. Additionally, there are some variations of black clothes with embroidered elements on the reverse side. These are typically flower floral motifs made with decorative fibers, and they appear most frequently on winter clothes of gems staying in uh, of gems staying inside. Uh, the prof the profited the profitity and cultural significance of these fabrics seemed an ill match for the war-bound gems, and as such, the clothes carry an impression of both great gain and great sacrifice. Page Winter Clothes Two: The amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth in sorry, the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth decreases during the winter season. In the northern hemisphere, as such, the gems enter a state of hibernation. A select few gems appointed to winter duty along with Congo, remains awake and remain awake and handle daily chores, as well as fight back any invading lunarians. As an average of 2.2 meters of snow blankets on the ground and ice flows begin to encroach on the island. These ice flows have a particular shape such that when the, they scrape against each other, they release a, ter ter a terrific screech that interrupts the hibernation of the gems. For this reason, the gems are undertake, that undertake winter duty wield unique weapons resembling ice saws and use them to split apart the flows. Their main mission during the winter, uh, yeah, as the majority of their work is both outdoors the, and done alone, they wear white clothes as to not stand out against the snow. The uniform worn by the winter duty gems are specifically crafted. Firstly, in order to turn the fabric snow white, uh, Leech must be created from the secretions of the decomposing white butterflies uh, in uh, the white butterflies in innards. These butterflies appear in explosive numbers during the late summer after reaching adulthood. They all they lose all they lose their mouth parts and therefore their ability to process food and only live for about three days. The gems all come together as a group and harvest the bodies left behind. Once decomposition begins, Directly touching the butterfly's body is dangerous, so they're gathered using chopstick-like uh, imp implements. Once the bleach is obtained, fibers from the acid plant are soaked in, in it to remove their color. Through this process, the fabric turns as white as new fallen snow. However, it is also very soft and near, and near transparent. The outer coat is made with three layers of it. A high collar shirt is worn beneath and created by weaving together two layers. The reverse side of the outer coat is lavishly decorated with fanciful embroideries made from vivid blue, red, black, or other colorful asa threads. Compared to the other winter uniforms, these costumes are sewn with a great deal of care and effort. It seems likely that these garments are packed full of the compassion and gratitude of the gems who crafted them, honoring the winter gems who work essentially alone through the long winter. The necktie and belts are identical to those of regular winter uniform. Uh, figure A depicts the winter uniform worn by Antarcticite, so that's this one, who works once their body hardens in the winter season. Figure B depicts the long sleeved uniform worn by Karen Gorm, whose arm was damaged previously. Uh, during the time period of our observation, the gems who undertook winter duty had white and clear hair. It seems gems that camouflage well against the snow are the ones chosen. So it's kind of that line's kind of interesting because um and Artocide is chosen because like they could really can only move during winter, so it makes sense. Karen Gorm, I think, you know, took the job be to replace an Artocide because of boss guilt things, you know, lovely story stuff. Um so it's kind of interesting that because they both look more camouflage with the snow and winter that the Third party observers assume that it's because they camouflage. And so it's kind of interesting to think, well, 
I don't know, do they do that or is it just a matter of convenience? I don't know. Anyway, next one, summer clothes. Defined in their culture as the time period when the snow has melted and the temperature rises, summer is when the gems awaken from hibernation, put on their summer uniforms, and resume their lives. Uh, the summer uniform is composed of, white, of a white shirt and black cutlets. Uh, the tie transitions between several variations, such as scavarous delicate ribbons or button-fastened neckties, uh, 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 over a short period of time. Figure A depicts the design observed. Yeah, figure A depicts the design we observed during the first half of the season. Figure B um, shows the design observed during the later half. Um, summer uniforms are created using a specific a spe using specially woven fabric derived from thin and light acid fabrics fibers. Uh, the collar and sleeves are wide and the colors are flared, uh, suggesting an emphasis on breathability. The clothes can be removed by undoing the frontal buttons compared to the winter uniforms, which were only incrementally improved. The summer uniforms underwent a vast amount of changes in the short time frame of 100 years. A commonality between the winter and summer uniforms is the exposure of the leg and legs and arms. As the gems do fear their body being broken during combat, we still do not entirely understand why their fashion includes bearing all four limbs. One supposition is that in the event that a gem is damaged during a Linarian strike, clothes that cover the entire body could be used as a sort of bag to carry all the scattered body parts at once. When the Lunarians descend to gather the pieces, thus increasing the possibility that the Lunarians escape with the damaged gem. There are also some researchers who profess the theory that the gems find some meaning in, cl in the cl clothes that express their health and youthful forms. It may simply be that they cannot produce much fabric from the Asa and are being, uh, e and are being economical. However, they use a generous amount of in weaving of fabrics for hibernation clothes and for hibernation in the hibernation room itself. Yes. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention before is that I literally did not even think about the embroidery part of the winter gems until uh, I read this. So you see how like it shows the embroidery parts there and the the gloves. I, I guess that I'll talk about in the gloves, but the the care Antarctosite and I assume Karen Gorms as well. Uh, gloves are uh, embroidered, and you can see that on actually on the cover of uh, three. Um, I would go grab it, but this is going to be a long video anyway. <laughs> but yes, so you can see the embroidery. You can even see it in um, the anime as well. I was wondering if like the anime got this detail because this came out way after the anime. Uh, and even the in the anime, um, the 3D model for an artist had the embroidery in the glove. And I was like, man, I just did not realize that small detail. And it's just crazy how that is just a part of the world building, how the Winter Gems clothes are more embroidered because the um, other gems show gratitude to them by doing that. And that's, that's really nice. Anyway, sleepwear. When the sun begins to set, uh, warrior gems begin their return to the school while keeping an eye on, on the island. After finishing their reports um, to the str strategist gems, they perform maintenance on their weapons or cleaning their private rooms. Once that's complete, they dust off their uniforms, change into their sleepwear, and enjoy a short period of free time. They often chat or play simple card games in a shared space within the school. The gem spends an average of 11 hours sleeping. The sleepwear is crafted with undyed asa fabric and opens in the front in the style of comfortable loungewear, suitable for a garment designed for re relaxation time. As seen in figure A, the left side of the front piece is folded on top and tied with a sash of the same fabric. Uh, hibernation wear also shares this characteristic. It seems that when gems wear this kimono style of clothing, they always fold the left side on top. Congo's, all, uh, Congo's uh, attire is folded on the right, but the reason behind this difference is, is as of yet no, unknown. Uh, that's interesting, actually. In the event that gems need to move about, Inside the school, while wearing the, their sleep clothes, they will often don a pair of thick socks. Figure B. There you go. Uh, especially the low hardness gems. This is to prevent unexpected damage to the feet that may might occur while barefoot. 
Considering, concerning gems that go out at night, the most prominent is Cinnabar, who shifted their living quarters from the school to the grotto in the southeast and independently conducts patrols during this time. Yes. Uh, did I have anything to add to that? Oh. I find it interesting that Congo wears his attire the opposite way. Um, the, uh, in Japanese culture, you only fasten the ties the other way symbolize like if, if you're dead if i believe i could be wrong about that you might have to search that up but um that's interesting that congo does it the opposite way anyway next hibernation clothes uh during the season defined by the gems as when the temperature falls and the snow blankets off the earth everyone besides the gems performing winter duty enters hibernation for a period of about five months in their culture, clothes are generally practical and plain due to the scarcity of resources. Hibernation clothes alone differ and are, in fact, the complete opposite, though they are all one color. All of the gem skills and most valuable fabrics are invested with wild abandon into the with, oh, with wild abandon into these clothes, resulting in extravagant pieces of craftsmanship. On the whole, the structure of the these garments. Um, is the same as their sleepwear, but their most prominent characteristic is the large baggy sleeves in comparison to the relaxed fit of the sleepwear. Hibernation clothes securely bind the upper body. The bottom is often pleated, and although there are some that are one-piece outfits, some are designed as separate. Uh, they are worn with the same socks as, sleep as the sleepwear. The designs depicted on the left is the only one, only one example. Each individual amongst the 25 gems is only one example. Each individual among the 25 gems, excluding the gems on winter duty, uh, has their own uniquely designed garment. These gems in charge of tailoring spend the majority of their year creating these. Gems on winter duty esti uh, gems on winter duty estivate after some after spring, and special estivation clothes are prepared for them as well. Um, the hibernation chamber itself is also unique. Although the gems usually sleep in their own rooms during the fall season, all the windows in the fourth floor of the building, are, they call the school, are blocked off with boards, and the entire floor is covered with hay. A blanket is spread out atop the hay, creating a sort of giant cushion. In this wide space, the gems sleep, sinking deep enough into the cushion to leave impressions. The walls are also blanketed. Light is provoked light is provided by jellyfish the winter duty gems as well as congo who stays awake year round take care of the jellyfish during this time sleeping in a group poses a risk to low hardness gems so it is a surmise that the gems do this in order to reduce the time winter gems must spend checking in on their sleep uh sleeping brethren while rare the gems can wake up during hibernation the gems toss and turn in their sleep waiting for spring when they can wake up and take off the ornate in lectures hibernation wear. And then the next one, gloves. Gloves. When gloves touch one another, regardless of who initiates the contact and who receives it, the gem of lower hardness will be damaged. In order to prevent accidents, both during the daily life and combat, gloves are carried on the person who and worn as needed. Uh, the most common types is an opera glove style design that covers both arms. Black gloves are carried in winter and white in summer and wore when necessary. Diamonds class gems with a hardness of 10 have a very high probability of injuring their fellows uh, and such as such always wear gloves. The gloves are made with the same asset fa based fabrics used in their uniforms. While there are, aren't many opportunities where they might touch another gem, winter duty gems still wear s short gloves. For their work spending long hours splitting ice flows. These gloves are made with five layers of regular fabric in order to create a thick and sturdy material. As the winter duty uniforms, the reverse side of the gloves is decorated with extravagant and colorful embroideries of plants. Medical gloves used figure C used when repairing gems are thin and white and easy to take off and on, on and off. Figure D shows the gloves worn by Congo, a remnant of ancient time of an ancient time period. Congo's origins are different from those of the gems. As such, even when touching them directly, he can avoid harming the gems via vibrating their inclusions to augment the difference in hardness. 
Therefore, the gloves are not strictly necessary and seem to be worn to, more to maintain a sense of unity with the gems. Direct contact with the, from a gem with a hardness of 10, the diamond class, can cause the entirety of and the entire body of a gem with a hardness under 10 to break. The amount of damage caused by contact between fellow diamonds is determined by whether they are monocrystallite or polycrystallite, or monocrystalline or polycrystalline in structure. Diamonds are far cause diamonds by far are cause the difference cause the highest level of damage via direct hardness as hardness decreases. So too does the amount of damage with the difference in number on the loss hardness scale between the two gems becoming the deciding factor. Additionally, various other factors such as the type of stone, monocrystalline, um, structural cleavage mass, and other qualities specific to the gem's body, the area of contact, speed of contact, force of impact, pressure, etc., are involved in determining the severity of the injury. But so as not to hurt one another, even gems of the same hardness will avoid purposely touching each other. Unless you're the amethyst, I guess. The uh, one thing to say about this is I did not realize that all the diamonds wore long gloves and long socks until I read this part. Uh, well, socks is next, but yeah. But, you know, Bort wears black gloves and socks. Daya wears white, black, and socks. And um, yellow wears yellow ones. Um, but I didn't realize that until then. And then you notice that the higher the hardest scale a gem is, the more they'll be covered. Um, so that's why Foss doesn't wear it, which somewhat doesn't make assets to me. Like at that point, I feel like everyone should just wear gloves and stuff. The only time Foss wears gloves and stuff is when they're being repaired, um, when there's like when the glue is still drying, um, and that's why Foss is seen wearing gloves sometimes. And then Cinnabar is seen wearing gloves whenever they have to carry something, probably because they're so fragile. Um, anyway, tights and socks. Um, as the as with the gloves, these are worn by gems in order to prevent accidental direct contact. The gem's doctor has a the greatest likelihood of touching another gem, and as such wears tights to cover their legs entirely. Socks reaching up past the thigh are prepared for the diamonds with black, white, black, white, and gray variants. Diamonds may wear different colors. Corundum cor, cor gems with a hardness of nine have socks reaching above the knee. While they don't have the highest hardness, jade-type gems are extremely sturdy due to them being stones and wear light green high socks. Um, the double-folded socks in figure E are worn by two layered structured gems, gloves, sports, but rather than preventing the accidental injury, they seem to be worn simply to express the unique nature of that gem. Um, I was going to say something. What was I going to say? Oh, um, had Paracha, who has the highest... Hardness of nine is seen with socks just above the knee. Um, like, they give this information, and then I realize, like, oh, you can actually see that with the characters, you know. Um, those socks are not purely worn for practical purposes of protection. They are often worn for fashion as well. There's also a theory that the original use was in combat during battle, and the event help is needed. Rather than having to search for the high hardness gems, the socks all allow them to be easily distinguished from fire. Oh, okay, that also makes sense. Um, it's mentioned several times in this book that the gems have bad eyesight. So the each hardness gem having a sock coated uh, uniform helps them know the hardness of a gem by looking at them. Gems take light. Uh, oh yeah, gems take light in through the surface of their body, where it's amplified as it reflects inside them. In an energy providing cycle. It's said that the light refracting from the inside of their body illuminates their surroundings slightly, allowing them to see. As such, the gems as a whole have rather poor eyesight and constrained by their limited resources and cultural norms. They saw an easy to understand signal that is, it is theorized that this is how they began associating different types of socks with specific types of gems. Through this, though acid fibers are used to once more in crafting the gloves and socks, they're worn with a different technique, cleverly enabling them to make a more fitted garment. Even so, elastic materials are scarce, and thus, in order to prevent the longer socks from slipping down, a natural adhesive is lightly applied to the legs. This adhesive removes the powder in the areas it was applied when the socks are removed. 
All right, on to shoes. Uh, the gem's feet are... Yep. Okay. The gem's feet are all basically the same size at around 21 centimeters. As such, one model of shoe is all that is needed. Instep, arc, toe cap, and all other parts of indirect contact with the foot are made with layers of black dyed ace, uh, ossa, black dyed ossa. The base and heel are made of wood. The amount of wear and tear on the heel varies according to the weight of the gem and the nature nature of their jaw, but frequent shoe maintenance is necessary for all combat gems. Figure A shows the most basic design worn by the majority of gems, characterized by the cuffed tongue. Figure B shows uh, uh, shoes observed to be worn by cinnabar. In order to prevent the shoes from slipping off due to the mercury produced by their body, lace of shoes were de devised. We also we have also observed several playful varieties designed to reflect the wearer's character. character. Figure C shows the, a shoe with the tongue decorated by a ribbon. Uh, the, a design requested by the brilliant by the brilliant colorless and diamond. Figure D is designed to provide for the polycrystalline board, or black diamond board. It is believed that the tassels were attached because anyone could immediately associate them with Fort's characteristic hairstyle. Figure E shows that mules mules worn by the Dr. Jim, I guess shoes. Figure E shows the shoes worn by the Dr. Jim Rutile uh, during treatment they got back and forth between the gems in question and their garment and, and their gathered fragments. And thus and these shoes are easier to take off on and off. The gems undertaking winter duty wear sharp, point, pointy pin heels made of obsidian order in order to effectively perform their job of splitting the ice flows. By wearing these and running across the, a flow, they open a small hole as guidelines on where the flow will break. The heels are made from obsidian material that was not born with any life forms inside, which is then used as a high durability war. Uh, figure F shows the design worn by Antarcticide, while G shows the design worn by Cairngorm, as Cairngorm was born from the inner layer of double-structured cohorts, Woast Quartz. Their body is one size smaller than the other gems, with a shoe size of 20 centimeters. Weapons. The gems wield black... The, the gems wield bladed weapons during combat with the Lunarians, as the Lu... As the Lunarians are mist-like, these weapons are designed for scattering rather than slicing or tearing, and a variety of types are made to suit the individual abilities and personalities of the warrior gems. The blades of the warriors, uh, the blades of the weapons shown at the t this time are mainly made of obsidian. During this period of observation, a crystal life a form called obsidian was also present. Obsidian's body has a unique quality of releasing molten obsidian when part of it is broken. Obsidian was given the duty of crafting weapons, and it seems they create blades by pouring this liquid form of themselves into wooden molds. The molten obsidian does not contain any inclusions, as the new crystal life forms are not born uh, with any regularities. With any regularity. It's hard to imagine that gems with such special characters has existed throughout all periods of their history, Thus, it is very likely that this method of weapons, weapon crafting is unique to this gem. In previous generations, it seems that durable minerals born without the life-given inclusions were used, but there were no past weapons preserved for use during our observation period. The molten obsidian that flows from obsidian has um, low temperature compared to the natural occurring molten rock after a period of cooling. It hardens into a material that is low hardness but extremely sharp, making it a sufficiently effective weapon for dispersing the Lunarians. Figure A shows the largest curved sword that we observed during this, our studies, used by the cordonum type Pod Paracha. Due to its weight, it cannot be hung from the belt like the other weapons. Figure B shows the curved sword wielded by the polycrystalline black diamond board. Compared to the sword in figure A, it's more suitable for fighting for fast movements, both swords are capable of wide-reaching attacks, but using them is considerably difficult. Figure C shows a thin, uh, shows a thin blade curved sword used by gems that are lacking in power but are agile and dexterous, such as Neptile, Neptunite, and or barrel type Goshenite. Uh, figure D shows the most basic model of sword, which is used by the majority of gems. Cool, and then we're on to. 
Weapons 2. Weapons 2. Uh, we'll, here we'll introduce some weapons with more limited uses um, than those on the previous page. Figure 8 shows the thinnest and lightest blade witnessed during the our observation is no wielder than the pinky finger of a gem. No wider, sorry. No wider than the pinky finger of a gem. It seems to be used for training beginning beginner combat gems. Figure E shows a scythe-shaped weapon as the center of the gravi gravity on this weapon is held out quite far from the body. It requires a high level of skill to wield and carries a sense of specialization with it. It was created for the nimble quartz typed gems who excel at keeping their balance in combat, used by ghost quartz and Karengorm. Figure G also shows weapons shows a weapon created for quartz type paired blades made from pairs of made for a pair of twins, not quite short enough to be called Tanto maybe that wasn't probably not translated. Called Tanto. Uh, but the about three two thirds of the length of a typical sword. Both Amethyst twins use these. Figure F is an ice saw used by gems on winter duty with a black that thickens towards the base. It is heavily effective at splitting ice flows. It can be sh sheathed into a wooden square scabbard and worn by the waist. We have confirmed its use by Antarctosite and Karenform. Um, the scabbards for blades B, C, D, F, and G, and H are tied with white cloth ribbons, which have a wooden part at one end and can be affixed to the belt allow, to allow mobility. While in motion, these method, this method of hanging scab, the, the, scab, scabbards from the belt is not suitable for gems with a hardness below four. The weight of the weapon can cause fractures in the body and wooden scabbards can hit the legs and break them. The hilt and sheath of the weapons are made of, of wood, as the blades are also cast in a wooden mold, and the weapon maker Obsidian's entire crafting process is carried out in conjugation with Sven, uh, the gem in charge of woodworking. The wood grain of the hilt scabbard is beautiful, as if they were carved from a si single plank of wood. But as the trees that of this land are thin and scarce, no large enough trees are for a, such a craft grow. As with the outer wooden crafts, a larger a large amount of scrap wood is stripped and realigned so that the grain lines so the, the grain lines line up. Um, artisan creations crafted in the image of imaginary lumber trees. Or imagery yeah, imaginary lumber trees. Um, then the next one. Medical tools. Uh, just checking how much we have left. Cool. Quite a bit for gems, yeah. All right, medical tools. Going back up, sorry. Medical tools. I, I'm gonna say that a while. Okay. Mineral life forms born on the beach of beginnings are a far cry from the previously depicted sculpture like smooth forms of the gems. They are rectangular and jaded in shape, with their specific crystalline structure exposed, much like the, any other min mineral. In order to prevent discrimination and stemming from the differences in physical appearance while maintaining their group lifestyle, all mineral life forms are tailored into a shape into the same shape uh, as soon as possible after their birth. Their hair is ge generally not modified very much, perhaps out of respect of the gems in biology, or perhaps in order to make a physical identification easier. Uh, the mineral life forms are refined by Congo and become gems, accurate and just detailed eyeballs are inserted into their eye sockets and they are integrated into society. These medical tools are used for bo both for refining the refining process in that early part of a gem's life and for repairing injuries sustained during daily life or combat. The tools themselves are simple and unsophisticated, however, as each gem's individual hardness, cleavage, and viscosity uh, must be taken into account using them requires a high degree of skill in the event that an entire uh, body part is lost during a linearian raid mineral is birthed on the beach of beginnings uh, without inclusions and therefore unable to attain life are carved out and extracted with the tools a through e and after be being formed into the shape of the par part that was lost glued onto the gem Figure F shows files used 
when refining gems with no cleavage, such as rock type or quartz family gems. Figure G shows a var variety of different knives used for the fine detail work during the re reinning process. Uh, reinning process? Okay. The blades can be changed out depending on the patient's hardness and other such characteristics. These, those with a hardness of four or lower are made of obsidian, much like the weapons. Anything higher is made from fragments from the ancient beginnings uh, there that are too small to be used as replacement parts, but leftover shards from the refinement of those replacement materials. Outside of medical tools, these mi mineral fragments have very little use. Aside from the school bells, school's bell and the aforementioned obsidian's weapons, we have not seen any other example of minerals used in their daily lives, as these are originally fragments of those who should have been born as friends and companions to the gems. It may be something like using the body of a stillborn infant to them, so to speak. Um, with this emotional reasoning in mind, it is thought that the gems do everything they can to avoid using them. Yeah. Um, the, on to the next one. Cosmetics. The color of a gem's body is originally the color of the, that particular gem's con, cons, constituted... Consti, I, I'm, I'm bad at reading. Just letting you guys know, I'm not that good at reading. Uh, the color of the gem's body is originally the color of the, that particular gem's constituent stone. Uh, but a custom of painting themselves white has taken a root in their culture as they're surrounded on all sides by the ocean in applicable and the application of blue and white powder has the additional goal of preventing salt adhesion or erosion on their bodies the protocol for applying the makeup is as such first the entire body is lightly coated in a plant-based adhesive called usunori or simply nori uh which means seaweed uh using an asa fiber paintbrush the inside of the fruit of the bada plant in late autumn is packed full of with a very sticky juice called nobara um, meant to protect the seeds the fruit is split and strained and the juice is extracted in order to use as usun usunori um the skin of the fruit is sturdy and durable and can be collected and stored once the usunori has dried on top of the skin and some of the moisture has evaporated, a powder of formation simply called white powder is generally dabbed with the powder powder puff. This formation this foundation is made by extracting powder albumin albumin from the seeds of a plant simply called Oshiro Oshiro Oshiroi bana. Uh, white flower, yeah. These are harvested in late summer and extraction of white powder from the five millimeter hardback seed type takes a great deal of time and effort. And about 1,000 uh, 1, seeds are necessary to create the amount needed for one gem. Due to this, it's preferable that the gems do their best to not get wet. Outside of water, there is no simple way to remove the foundation. The, in the event that they need to go to into into the sea, a salt-resistant resin coating is applied, but as the resin cannot be found anywhere except in the Roboku ancient trees on the northeast part of the island, the yearly harvest is highly valuable and as such it is precious. a precious resource using it without permission is forbidden. Uh, and no one would do that. Using it without permission is forbidden. No character in the series has ever done that before. Okay. Bowls, uh, bowls, baskets, storage is what this this section is about. Uh, using for used for storage in the useful sea, used for storing the useful seeds, fruits, and leaves. Uh, the gems gather, as well as carrying them. There, these are communal items shared by everyone. The gems are taught to handle them with care, as there are few natural resources on the island. They span a wide range of designs, and compared to the clothes and other daily tools, there's quite a large number of them. Our con conjecture, uh, our conjecture is that the vessels such as these are re regarded as si simple tools on this island and may not have any particular cultural meaning to the gems. Um, figure A shows the most common bowl. Uh, 
that's this one, figure A. Figure A shows the most common rule and the one we have be observed and used the most. While it appears to have been made by hollowing out a, tr a tree, as mentioned previously, it was crafted by joining together several pieces of wood scrap. It is thought that the items from a time period with larger trees were referenced in an attempt to recreate them. Holes of various sizes and depths of in figures A1 and A2, based on this basic model, are also created. Figure B, um, figure B shows a lightweight knit wicker basket made from lengths of scrap paper. It has a superior breathability, and if the inside is lined with cloth, it can even be used to temporarily store seeds, fruits, or fibers. Figure C is a basket created from woven trees tree bark used for carrying lightweight objects compared to the bowl from figure A. The materials used to create this basket do not require a high level of skill or to use. Indeed, as anyone can make it if taught how, it's possible that these baskets were once more com commonplace. But as the tree bark itself is a valuable resource and not terribly durable, we saw only a small number of these model of baskets during our observation period. Figure D is a container of, for small valuables, it's used to temporarily store pieces of gems being repaired and other such purposes. Figure E shows containers for tools, the gems uh, in charge of tailoring uh, stores, their sewing implements here, and the doctor and weaponsmith also deposit various instruments in these. Figure F is an unusual vessel that opens with a key. It's unclear what it's used for as we've never seen the key. Cool. Yeah. So those are all these. Yeah, I don't know if I should be holding this closer or if I should zoom in, but oh, well, you guys can see that great. Okay, next one. Let's see how much more do we have to go. We have quite a bit. Yep. Uh, I guess maybe I'll make it into two parts or maybe I'll take a break at some point. <laughs> okay, chair and desk, the gravitational pull of Earth. I'm just going to call it Earth can be considered about one-third of its former strength uh, from before the meteor impact spl splintered it into several satellites. Even so, constructing a chair that can support the gem's heavy bodies uh, is a source of great mental stress for, to woodworker gems. Due to its limited supply of lumber, the majority of chairs are built with three legs as small as possible. Generally, they are used during short rest periods so that the gems don't get dirty or scattered uh, or, or scratched by the floor. It's rare that a gem will sit down for an extended length of time. The frequency of repair is high, so it cannot be said that using chairs is particularly logical. Uh, however, it's theorized that recreating the lifestyle of the ancient creatures holds some importance to the gems. And the furniture's purpose is more decorative in nature. One or more of our most more eccentric scholars insists that the high number of three-legged chairs is reminiscent of elderly people from the ancient race. Um, figure A depicts the earliest, most basic stool crafted from a tree root, miraculously still in one piece. It's not suitable for carrying a lot of weight. Figure B shows the most commonly used chair while it's used as a seat. It's also often used to hold clothes or, or as a weapon stand. Figure C is a unique uh, model reusing the, folk, uh, the, reusing the fork of a tree as the legs. The seat has a cloth covered cushion filled with dry glass. It, it's used after damage, repa after damage repairs. Figure D shows a high chair with a number of legs uh, added into the three spaces. As most gems are busy working as, at their posts, it's more of an interior decorating element. Additionally, before going, uh, initially before, where was I? Additionally, before going to bed, the majority of the gems enjoy c conversation with one another, but generally pull out cushions to sit on the floor at this time. This chair is rarely used. Figure E is a beach, uh, figure E is a, be <laughs> is a bench, Seen in the strategy room, it's temporarily used by gems on standby. There are fewer variations in desks compared to chairs. Uh, there are less of them presented as well. Figure F shows the basic two-legged design. There's also a model of a drawer. Uh, yeah, there's also a model of a drawer. Figure D holding small for holding small items. 
figure H, uh, that's this one. Yeah, I was going to point them out, but yeah. Figure H is a footstool. Figure I is a step ladder uh, used to reach items on high shelves um, in the medical room as well as board up the windows in the hibernation chamber. One must be extremely careful with how they shift their weight. However, on those who are not used to using it, often fall off when they try. Yep. And then the next one. Education. Uh, newborn gems are as innocent. In a, in a, in a, newborn gens are as innocent, just, innocent as the babies of other organisms. The rate of birth for, for, for gems is once every 100 to 1,000 years, and sometimes irregularly, such as twins or and two bodies at the same time are common, but every time one on one basic education, uh, but every time one on one basic ed education with Congo is offered. A newborn students sit in small chairs and are given a short lecture of about 15 minutes a day for a duration of three months. They are taught history from the meteor impact to the present, which is said to be the origin of the world, read aloud by the goal. But the goal isn't just about one-sided learning, rather the reaction to the lesson there, rather from the reaction to the lesson, there's a strong aspect to determine the role in the group by asserting the characteristics of the gemstone that is the student and the area of interest and in identifying the individualities. Um, as an example for this, during the learning, uh, during the learning period of board, a black polycrystalline gem di diamond, they are at the least fragile due to the highest hardness and the unique composition of diamonds. Uh, they were extremely strong, both physically and mentally, had extremely high physical abilities and rational thinking it was dexterous and was ideal as a leader. Also, Euclid has a high degree of hardness, uh, but they also have a strong vertical opening, uh, and their physical characteristics that tend to crack are reflected in their character. Uh, it was all, an excellent conductor in charge, uh, or they were an excellent conductor in charge of having both the field of view and flexibility to emphasize with others in this way, most gems are directly linked to the physical characteristics of the soul. Um, phospholite is an irregularity. They have a strong desire to improve, which is the to improve, which is the opposite of their physical ability. But the physical ability of the basic gemstones do not change, leaving them unable to given to be given a social role. It is. To, it is suspected that this is an inclusion malfunction or mutation. In addition, cinnabar has a lower has a lower moss hardness, although it has a number of characteristics that make them unsuitable for group life, such as the emission of toxic mercury from their body. Uh, they are highly intelligent and are capable of self control, and decided their own role. Oh, mouthful. All right. Papers and writing instruments. The papers used for recording is near, is made by the person in charge of paper manufacturing. The raw material is the hard portion of the asa uh, that was not used in the fabric produ products. The soft part used for textiles is called kuasa. Um, the part used for paper is called kami asa. The and asa are harvested in the late autumn every year. The selected asa are exposed in winter and frozen. Um, Collect in, collect in spring is the to remove, yeah, they're collected in spring to remove the hard skin and dirt. It is softened and whitened by repeating the process for three years, cutting the hard fibers and dyeing them in the sun. In the fourth year, loosen the with a wooden stick and perform the root for the first daffodil, um, with white drawn from the vestibule pond, then dried on a wooden frame, and if stored well, the paper produced will not deteriorate for a thousand years. The cut of the bound book is used as a recording medium for a writing book. Uh, recycles Cycled paper is thoroughly crafted and treated as a valuable item. 
The feature is that no heat source is used for making paper. Uh, okay. For the writing instrument B, they collect the brown coal exposed near Unohama, um, mix it well with clay, put it in a mold, mold it and dry it, wrap the dried product with the paper and use it. The linguistic culture on the paper is very unique. What bothers what bothers us is there is nothing in common between the words spoken by the gems and the text. The written text is difficult to understand compared uh, composed of high level cryptographic cryptography and even at our institute it has no not yet been deciphered compared to the length of the society the number of records kept is very small there is no systematic one and most of them are personal records such as pr prose diaries um also because of this uh, also because of this difficulty it is not being utilized often it has been pointed out that this may be due to the refusal of information by other cultures or the intention not to leave a record for future generations. Naturally, there is no cre creative literature. All right, and so then we have the what do we have? We have the sketch illustration. We have the sewing uh, rooms. Cleaning, or that's cleaning supplies. Supplies, light, school, uh, and then stand, and then Congo. Uh, Okay, I'm going to take a quick break and then I'll come back with this one. All right, sketched illustrations. As mentioned in the previous section, the records of Earth are unnaturally small in light of our statistics observing various societies. Usually when a society is in a state of war, records are of paramount importance to the post-war situation, and it is necessary to record accurate history. The reason might be that the gems are almost immortal, and as such, oral communication is used as the main means of communication. It is not needed, or is it not needed, or is there another reason we are currently investigating? The gem Alexandrite was uniquely referred to among the few records. There is a sketch of the enemy Lunarians. We have long been aware of the presence of this hostile force, and have tried to position it as a trace of the uh, Earth satellite due to the collection of the hostile force uh, from the gem's behavior. But since the acquisition of this information has been advanced by technology, it was only possible to capture faint moment movements of energy. Therefore, regarding the accuracy of this sketch, I had put it on hold. But after this, I got a reply from the Lunarians, and I concluded that um, it was fairly ac it was a fairly accurate sketch. In addition, from the Lunarian army, it was a very valuable material because there were a few answers related to the matter. The sketches are accomplished uh, are accompanied by explanations and text by those who have but those have yet to be deciphered. A is believed to be a picture of a lunar warship upon arrival. A giant statue stands in the center. It seems to have a container for collecting uh, A1. Uh, uh, both sides are, both sides may be considered decorative or weapons of H, A2, that's, uh, where, oh, A1, A2. Um, B seems to be a bow an arrow that is fired at the gems, it is likely to be the main weapon due to the large amount of sketches. Uh, it is thought that it is fired in the air. It seems to be, B1 seems to be an underwater arrow due to its structure. B1, this one, yep. Um, B2 is a small bow. Uh, B3 is a spear. Um, it is speculated that the is would be used for melee combat after it the salvo in the air is over. Yes, and those are those. Here's a closer up if you didn't see. All right, on to the next one. So cloth, cloth and sewing tools. Uh, fashion is the most de developed culture on this planet. S successive clothes, clothes designers have been consistently pursuing their creativity and enthusiasm, even in the environment where raw materials are scarce. Uh, gems that are uniform in appearance have a more beautiful and unified appearance due to the, their refined outfits. Although they are simple, as described in the section of, on winter clothes, the stalks of Asa, Asa, which are about the height of the waist of the gemstone, are collected, dried, and peeled from the fibers to create an elegant luster. It becomes a nice cloth. There are wooden rustic 
and primitive wearing weaving machines for the weaving cloth. Um, and it is one of the few machines manufactured and used on this planet. Asa it has no, not undergone a large scale cultivation or production control. Reje control. Uh, rejection of technology, technological progress can be seen. Weapons are responsible for sewing tools such as needles and scissors. As for dyeing, I mentioned in winter clothes, but there are black, white, yellow, purple, etc. Due to natural colors, uh, due to natural coloring. Uh, all the sewing is done manually. Fashion is considered to have an artistic side on this planet where literature, music, and pictorial expression are rarely seen. Are gems, living entity, uh, are gems living entities that have little interest in arts and entertainment, or is it due to Congo's education? Or it may be considered that there is no room for prosperity even if these occur due to being exposed to long-term war conditions. And there's this one. Next one. Cleaning tools. Uh, the energy source of the gem is, is light, which is absorbed uh, from the surface of the body and reflects it inside of it. After being amplified and consumed by inclusions, it is released from the body's surface. This is considered to be the metabolism of the organism. The components of absorbing light and emitting light are different. Even if the body surface is covered with white powder for the first time, the absorption rate drops by only 2%. And in case of a highly transparent gemstone, internal reflection can be sufficient from the head. When the gem spirit is uplifted, its own reflectance its own its reflectance increases and its radiance increases. However, the absorption rate also increases. Gems describe this absorption of light as eating the sun. Uh, gems have no risk of illness or death due to bacterial or viral contamination, but the awareness of cleaning is high due to Congo's education. In order to keep the resident residential building called school always clean, using dusters and wooden dustpans, dust is often removed. Cleaning off the premise is mainly done with jade and eucalyptus. Uh, a private room, uh, a private room is a, a gem's private room is a gem's responsibility. Uh, a is a large here's a A is a large room used for cleaning uh, public spaces and private rooms. B is used for collecting debris for medical and crafting purposes. Uh, C is for cleaning small parts uh, such as desks, chairs, and window frames. D uh, is a brush for clothes to make your clothes last. Uh, dust them well when you take them off, and the outside air of the island is very dry throughout the year, so it is easy to get dust and salt. Uh, while gems do not need baths, they will sometimes remove dust from themselves. E is a is a wooden dustpan. See? It's so thorough, right? Well, let me, I don't think I have anything else to add. But yeah, it's crazy how much thorough the lore of this goes that we don't really see that much. All right, bedding. So gems are given private rooms, uh, but have little personal belongings. Chairs, clothes, hangers, uh, small boxes, containers, and lighting for the fruits picked up by patrol are all available for them. Their private room has an anchored hollow cutout from the wall. A mat filled with dried asa is laid there to form a bed. Pillows and drapery are also made from asa. Um, only in the private room of Antarctosite that crystallizes only in winter and becomes a liquid in summer and er, er, and, and becomes a liquid to sleep in the summer. The liquid in the pool is regularly clean and managed by Congo. Uh, during the observation period, there was no lunar invasion at night and the average sleeping time of a gem was 11 hours. It doesn't man mean that they can't move at night, it, but the movements is reduced to a, by 27%. Moreover, the gems have, a po have poor eyesight, so there's little merit to work at night. Only Cinnabar, who voluntarily watches the night, is active. Gems are quite blunt to changes in temperature. Uh, hot, dry winds blow in the summer, and ice drifts, drifts in the winter. Uh, the annual temperature difference is as high as 130 Celsius, but it has been confirmed that they cannot re recognize something as hot unless they are soaked in acid. It is expected to be even stronger in cold weather. Therefore, the significance of the, the drape is not warmth, but the shape. Uh, it is considered that to have a strong formulaic meaning. In the latter half of the observation period, each gem was given a stuffed animal. It has a puppy-like design and is packed with a loose cloth. 
It seems to be popular among them. Its characteristics are very similar to those of the chief guard, but in page 102 in the linearian section. Uh, but the relationship is unknown, and it is under investigation. There's the pupper, the, the stuffed pupper. Yep. The con um, valescent center? Uh, a word. Uh, the covalent center, you know, the place where they take dead gems. Lovely. Or, well, not dead, sorry, they don't die. Um, the third floor of the school is large, and it, uh, is, the third floor of the school is a large space next to the first floor, and is called the convalescent room, convalescent floor. Um, the entire floor is shallow, covered with a soil, uh, and low-profile, negative, toler tolerant plants are cultivated on it. In the corner of the floor, there are three rooms of eucalypt spear-like sh sh shelves hung with white cloth. Um, inside, various large and small paper boxes are arranged neatly. The paper box is made of, lar of layers of normal paper embossed with a floral pattern and lightly, uh, and lightly and durably coated with a resin. Inside the rest of the bo body, inside is the rest of the body of gems that were taken to the moon are carefully placed. Considering the high history of the gems, the total number of debris stored on the shelf is small. Looking at the building structure, the entire floor is slightly raised, even if the amount of soil is excluded. So there are probably innumerable boxes under shallow soil. It is considered to be um, the pieces of the gems of old age were originally stored under the soil, but ran, they ran out of space and are now stored on shelves. The deep green square where the, sh uh, where the sun shines is full of pieces and, and tranquility. Uh, this place is believed to be provided in a sense that it takes a break here for uh, it. That it, ta it ta the gems placed here take a break here from the moon until uh, the gem returns. Uh, this is also a way for, of burying a creature that do not have the concept of death. Uh, however, within the observation period, no gems return. So this is where Lapis's head is stored. Um, and I believe ghosts, oh, Ghost oversees this, if I remember. Uh, basically all the, the, the totally not dead gems. Because um, they aren't, they're immortal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, insects. It is the second largest life form after the gems, which is very interesting. Um, the most abundant on the land. However, there are only about 20 species. Most of them feed on grass and pollen, honey being the main diet. Uh, the total number of insects serving as prey for carnivorous species is very small, and the climate is extremely severe. Insects have evolved particularly because they have no natural predator and as such, no survival instinct. A is a giant black uh, beef beloof uh, butterfly with a total length of 30 centimeters. It is extremely fast and on days with strong winds, they fly together. V is a beautiful be butterfly with a fluorescent yellow pattern. Unlike the ordinary butterflies, it has no head and uh, abdomen. Um, it sucks nectar from the left and right proboscis uh, and distributes nutrition throughout the body. Uh, though the pipes uh, along the wings, the uh, wings veins, um, throughout. Oh, it, it, it distributes nectar nutrition throughout the body through pipes along the wings veins. It's loved by gems because it perches on their hair and nose. Uh, C is a white butterfly with a lumpy uh, abdomen. Postmortem uh, yeah, post fermented intestines are used for bleaching. Uh, D uh, is a ribbon-shaped herb 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 herbivorous herbivorous. Herbivorous, herb, a word, herbivorous mayfly. Uh, the tail is key shaped uh, and a lightweight wingless beetle, uh, E, um, hooks uh, onto the, to help it move to the, floor, to the flora uh, of its choice. Beetles provide honey in the, to the mayflower and builds a symbiotic relationship with them. F is a completely transparent butterfly that is difficult to see um, the reason behind the transparency is unknown. The opposite is G, a, an insect from the Goromo family. Uh, the front wing has a cloud motif, and the rear wing has a red polka dot. 
Uh, the head has red polka dots on the white background, and the back back of has a pattern has a heart pattern. It is very noticeable with a strange cry. Again, the intent is unknown. H is a colorful beetle with different um, colors depending on the individual. Since it appeared most recently, it is considered to be a, an imitation of a gem. Uh, in addition to these, there are butterflies that become adults once every thousand years and an outbreak. There's a mantis uh, that matures only once in every thousand years, eating only that eating that only that butterfly. This Hana mantis is pathogenic and lays eggs that are in phase with the adult cycle of butterflies. Only the Hana, Hana mantis is carnivorous in the ecosystem during the observation period. It was confirmed to be an insect. Plants is what's next. All right. Plants. Like insects, the number of plants is small and there are about 30 kinds. Here we introduce plants that are frequently used in the life of gems. A is, the type, is a type of rose family and is simply called rose. Uh, it blooms large, beautiful, uh, flowers who are red and white in early summer and autumn. The red fruit that grows in late autumn stores mucus to protect the seeds, and this mucus is the raw material for uso, u, u, us, usnori, uh, that's usnori, uh, used for bonding gems. Flowers are used for decorative beca decoration because of their wonderful aroma. A uh, bee is a species close to the call to the clam family and is a raw material for cloth and paper. It is the most utilized plant. Uh, it grows to a height of about one meter and flowers are pale and blue to white. Uh, black seeds are rich in oil and used for fishing woodwork, for finishing woodwork. Uh, C is a kind of Aralisis, or Aralisia called Ade. Uh, it grows along the sea on the south coast which the thick and hard stem is broken. Uh, a black emission uh, emulsion overflows. It, this emulsion turns into a black dye. D is Fukuyama, Fukuyame, uh, a pretty bulbous plant that emerges from the snow in the beginning of the spring. The dried crystal becomes a yellow dye. The person in charge of winter season will end the season by collecting these flowers. E is a plant belonging to the family of Olympiaceae, uh, which is called Ocyravia, or Ocyravana, or some, some, some word. Uh, the seeds to be applied in late summer um, but are spherical, which, uh, a di with a diameter of about five millimeters. And the gemstone used to the, you, and the gems use the light powder, powdery endos, and the, uh, the gems use the white powder as a cosmetic. All five planet plants are wild and have not been cultivated. Although there are some years when the required amount cannot be obtained, it does not possess a, a, a serious problem because of the amount is always stored and the harvest amount will be rec recovered after waiting a few years. Uh, F is a hor hort horticultural species on the island. Um, it is a perennial plant of the genus, Ast uh, genus Astragalus, uh, raised on the school terrace or in a private room. It is strong and negatively tolerant and blooms in all four seasons except in the extreme cold season. Uh, flowers come in a variety of colors and the gems grow flowers of their choice in their ro own rooms. The number is unknown and the word Hana is used within the school for flower. Hana means flower in Japanese. All right, lighting jellyfish. Uh, not using fire is one of the greatest features of the civilization. Most of the gems have never seen uh, fire. During the observation period, some of the fields were, were burned in the summer due to extreme dryness, but there were ex they were extinguished immediately by Congo. No gems were burned during the observation period. However, there are cases where there were they were rebuilt after being dissolved by acid, but if the body has was burned, the remaining ashes can be resolidified, or the individual could be restored if ash if the ash was transform transferred to a new gem. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> Just to 
that they can come back even from being burned to ash. Uh, jellyfish are gelatinous aquatic organisms, and the luminescent bacteria is uh, symbolic with a cross-shaped mouth emitting strong light. Its food mainly consists of underwater plankton, but black seeds of phlox are their favorite, offered by Congo, and the gems are as, as snacks and rewards. Um, normally, uh, around 100 individuals are kept in the vestibule pond of the school building, but according to the needs of the gems, they are put into a wooden bowl, uh, placed in a dedicated bowl, and used as lighting. Uh, curious, uh, highly intelligent, and understanding the language of the gems and verbal instructions, they can adjust color and light intensity. It is also common to see the gems and jellyfish making a high five. Uh, some gems are very fond of them and named each one. Uh, when it is damaged or aged, it shoots something called a pol polyp uh, and throws away its body. A polyp is affixed on the bottom of the pond and a new body emerges from it and is reborn. It may be rarely divided into two bodies and the number may increase. Um, it seems that the jellyfish that originally lived in the sea began to be kept as lighting. However, due to overfishing by the the, the other race, uh, the number has fallen drastically, and now almost no wild specimen can be seen. Jellyfish sometimes wash up on the beach and are rescued by the gems. Like what happened when the amethysts were on patrol with Floss. Jaco School. Uh, it is a large building uh, in wh on which gems live. It seems that Congo precedes the, precedes the huge sedimentary rock, mainly composed of quartz, that originally existed on land. It has considerable strength and it is unknown how, uh, how it was formed. So the pond side, B, is south. The mountain-type resi residential building is divided into five levels. On the first floor for the west side, one, there is a public health room costume uh, production room, operation room, weapons production room, woodcraft room, pro paper production room, and on the east end there too, there is a self-study space um, is there. On the second floor, there are about 30 gemstone private rooms and a shared terrace facing the pond. The third floor is the long-term rest area. Um, the fourth floor is the hibernation room. Uh, the fifth floor is Congo's meditation room. The floor area is smaller on the upper floors. Uh, ground wa water is pumped up in the front pond. B. The aquatic plants si similar to, uh, to the aquatic plants similar to water hyphacinth are cultivated. Since the bag-shaped level, uh, since the bag-shaped leaves contain air, they have a strong buoyancy and do not sink even if a gem weigh, weighing several hundred kilograms is placed. If you want to move in a shortcut uh, on the front pond, there are many gems that pass through the pond using floating grass as a scaffold. However, because it is difficult for many gems to move over flo floating grass, the jellyfish in the pond panic. Um, C is made, yeah, C is made of small iron. It is installed on a wooden, wooden pillar, mainly when the Lunarians arrives. It receives a discovery report from the gems around it, and it's sound and it is sounded to inform the scattered gems. When you push a part of the quartz pillar snuck, uh, when you push a part of the quartz pillar stuck stock maybe in the pond, the stock inside the bell that connects to the rope moves through the pond and the and the fishing pole, uh, and it rings, which is one of the few or I'm pretty. I'm there's no fish, and the, and the pole is probably just the pole, and the pole, and it rings, which is only, which is one of the few, me, me, uh, which is one of the few machines manufactured and used by this star. It is one of the devices pushing, one of the devices pushing has a step, um, the and the number of times that it rings indicates the direction of Lunarian's appearance. Uh, the bell is made of metal and is uh, the only casting on the hill. Um, from the molding, it seems that it was cast by Congo in the earliest days of society. As mentioned in the previous section, it is pointed out that fire was never used in this society, and it is was intentionally created for a different purpose. Okay. Uh, I find it interesting that there's not that many machines in the gem society. I, w I just thought of, but it, maybe it's possibly because Congo is a machine, 
I'm not sure, but they said that there's the bell and then there's the machine uh, used for making clothing. And that's about all the machines they use, which is very interesting. All right, the land, um, Earth. Yeah, 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 that says Earth. Earth from the Northern Hemisphere reference point C, 45 degrees north, 20, 38 inches east, longitude 3. I believe people figured out that this is where France is located. I'm not sure if that's entirely accurate, but I heard that uh, people were able to figure that out by this. So it's around where France or Europe is, I guess. Um, in our Earth knowledge, I guess, because it's kind of like a whole different Earth at this point, isn't it? Um, present at 1801, uh, it is the only land on this planet with a terrain similar to a sand beak. Uh, the extension is approximately 13.7 kilometers. Uh, there are four distinct seasons, short spring, an autumn with strong winds, hot summers, and dry summers, uh, and half a year encapsed in deep snow and ice flows. Um, the temperature reaches 60 degrees Celsius in summer and negative 70 degrees in winter. It is very dry throughout the year. Although called a hill, it is actually an island. The place name is convenient for des designating the place to look around and collecting plants. It seems that it was attached and the origin is the direction, typography, and color of the ground surface. Uh, garden A, where is that? A is over here. A, Garden of the World. The cliff farthest from the school only Congo sometimes visits in the early morning. B. Onohama, shore of Narciss Narciss shore of Narciss um, gems are produced from the cliff surrounded by rocks in the eight layers of sand. Um, C. West Beach, the calm, uh, the calm and shallow sea of beautiful mint blue spreads spreads out. D. Uh, West Plateau, plateau uh, an open plateau with a good view of the sea. E, yeah, E, e is over here. Uh, e, Mahara. Uh, there is a colony of Ada along the coast. F, over here. Uh, Min, Minami no Hama. Uh, that's Minami is no Hama. I don't know what Hama means. A beach open to the south of the school. Hoshino Oka. Uh, that's G. Um, Hoshi means star, I believe, if I remember correctly. Hoshino Oka. Uh, a hill with a six-pointed star-shaped mica uh, protruding. That makes sense why it's called star, then. Um, H, northern swamp. Uh, Westland spread north of, of the school. Uh, I, uh, Shira, Shiraoka. Uh, oh, that must mean something. I don't know what oka means. If you know in the comments, let me know in the comments. Uh, bright hills, there is a an Asa colony nearby. Um, J, J is right there. There's, they're getting really, really detailed now, We're just with where it is. Uh, J, um, yellow forest, a forest area of thin trees with almost no leaves. K, um, Aonomori, blue, blue, Aonomori is blue forest. Uh, there's a mass of Osi, Osirobana, um, Kiri no Shitsugen, Kiri no Shitsugen. Uh, that's L. The, this was the yellow. This was L in the morning. This is L. Um, a small marsh that is open uh, but dim. M. Uh, fu, Futano Hama. Two beaches that look exactly like the terrain that extends the sea. Uh, and then N. Okay. N. Cape of Emptiness. Uh, this is a cave on a cliff. Uh, and the gem cinnabar is staying there. And then O is uh, the school. So it's so it's interesting. So Cinnabar's all the way here, the school's over there, and then yeah. I'm wondering where Foss is at the beginning of the story, because they're also there at the end. Um it's probably like a very specific place here, but I don't know where it is. Uh all right. Zazen stand. Sorry, switching camera. Uh this one's just the stand as it is, you see. Zazen stand. It is a wooden stand in which Congo sits. It is located in the Kong Congo meditation room on the fifth floor of the school and has no other furniture. It is made by a gem in charge of wood woodcrafts for Congo, which does not have its own room. The hexagonal shape reflects Congo's request, but 
but there is evidence that this was once decorated in vivid colors. They have peel peeled off, but it is still used. Kangu Hall's meditation, the process of sitting for six hours to several days on the stand. No one can wake him up during that process, which could be just sleeping. Uh, alternatively, it is presumed that some kind of prerog process some kind of processing is performed in internally, and it takes time because of the na nature of Congo. As will be explained in detail in the next section, it is speculated that Congo, which is th thought to have been created by ancient creatures, used a seat of this shape during maintenance at that time. The time of meditation is gradually increasing, and it is thought that Congo will one day stay in that state. Um, so one thing that's interesting is that uh, when we get to see a flashback of Congo, uh, after Foss has taken his, uh, spoilers, uh, after Foss has taken his eye is that he's actually sitting in a chair that, like, looks like it was inside a box after, uh, Dr. I, I really need to get her name right, um, after she, she, like, woke him up after a while. So I wonder if this, like, relates to that at all or something. All right. On go. Although it has been confirmed that there is a leader that unifies gems, we finally succeeded in studying Congo, a non-gem, but a mechanical life form created by living creatures of ancient times. Information analysis is blocked by advanced civilization and details are unclear. It is believed to have existed on Earth for at least 10,000 years uh, and up to hundreds of millions of years. Uh, it is, its main component is carbon, height is 2 meters, and weight is 175 uh, I assume it's going to go there. Yeah. One point seven. There was okay. There's a measurement for that. Uh, unknown manufacturing date. Unknown is probably kilograms. Um, unknown manufacturing date. Unknown lifetime. Um, unknown energy source. Some researchers suspect that it has that it is a prototype of a permanent engine engine for the purpose of moving it out of the star system. From the unique appearance that has little commonality with the gems and the cloves that hide the skin heavily. It is presumed that it was manufactured in an ancient religious sense. Three white kimonos, a black kimono on top, and are and sewn a wood, worn cloth in a hexagon uh, to create a shallow type of robe. The details change with the times, but they are almost consistent, and it is speculated that there may be regulations on clothes. It tends to become simpler over the years, but this is likely to minimize the use of valuable cloth. Its personality is intelligent, kind, and compassionate. It does not hibernate, but it communicates one-on-one -on -one with the gems that are in charge of the winter season. It seems to be putting more load on it to hide it. Uh, it, it seems that the com community is built on the basis of ancient knowledge, but there is no mention of itself, and it seems that com communication of information is prohibited. Uh, this tendency is particularly strong in the field of technology development, and almost no mention is made. Uh, of the field of art. Recently, a very strong energy emission was confirmed during the observation. We look forward to the future reports on that. Yep, and so that is the end of the gem section, and I'll go over the Lunarian section in the next video, and then the uh, last very small section in the last video. One more thing I wanted to add, just kind of interesting, is that um, uh, it talked about how the gems don't have a lot of records, and how um, they don't have a lot of records on like how they do things or something like that. What's really funny is that Congo gave um, like an encyclopedia, basically what this book is. Uh, Congo gave that test to Foss uh, to actually write down like all the things that they do and all that stuff. And then, you know, Foss didn't do it. But it's interesting and it also shows that Foss isn't interested in the past as a, probably a lot of the characters are either because they want to ignore it because they've lost somebody or because they are immortal, so they don't see the importance of looking back in the past, or they'll assume they'll remember it all. Uh, so it's very interesting. But it's also probably because Congo probably has a really good memory because he's a machine. Uh, spoilers, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, <laughs> hopefully you read the series, all the series by now. But um, he, it's very interesting because uh, that probably is why they don't have a lot of records is because they have Congo, or they always think that they'll have Congo or something like that. So very interesting, we'll go over the next, one. Thanks for uh, watching this entire long, long video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that uh, my reading wasn't too bad. Um, the 
I was re I'll link the wiki in the description if you want to read it yourself and look at the photos yourself. Uh, and the I'll do the Lunarian section next and the section after that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.